Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Um, my name is Tony Tesler. Uh, I am Tony Stamps. And today I'm going to show you how to make some mixed media, some altered um, candy boxes. So at first, um, I should have printed this out, but if you want more ideas, more fun stuff to look at, tonystamps.blogspot.com. Dot com. Check it out. And since you're watching this on YouTube, I just started my channel last year and um, I really need some subscribers. So if I get, if I hit a hundred subscribers, then I get to pick my own name and I want Tony Stamps because I've had that for 20 years. Um, so please subscribe. I would love to have you and let's get to it. Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to alter and decorate one of these candy boxes. Well, actually three. I've got three different sizes that I'm going to go through. Um, but this was just a Whitman sampler. You know, it comes wrapped in red cellophane. I got them at Walmart. And this is the smallest one that I got. And I already opened it. Um, the candy's still in here. So for this, for what I'm going to do with this one, I don't need to remove the candy. I can just leave that in there. I just have to be careful. Um, but you can do a lot of things with these. So this is altered meaning um, you can change the appearance of this. You can leave this as is with this, you know, the red foil and you can just cover up some of it. Um, you could cover up the back if you wanted. So you can leave it and just decorate it. You can cover the whole thing with paper if you want. Designer series paper, printed paper, um, cardstock, embossed cardstock, you know, anything you want really. Stickers, whatever you have. Um, so you can leave it as is, cover it with paper. You can paint this. So I'm gonna do that for my third one that I'm gonna give to my husband um, because he likes blue. So I'm going to make it not red. Um, so you can paint it. You can even decoupage. So uh, there's plenty of different options. Um, so your first thing is, you know, you buy your box, think about who you're gonna give it to you know, what kind of, what do they like? What kind of design do you want to go with? And then you want to gather your supplies. So let's just jump into it. Um, so this is, like I said, this is the smallest one that I have and I'm going to, um, I don't actually have this in mind for anybody yet, but I want it to stay Valentine-y. So I just went through my stuff and gathered, um, this cute little stamp that I got recently from, um, Unity. He's going to go on there. I have some heart doilies that I've got to cut out. This was a 12 by 12 sheet. And um, I had some other heart doilies and I just don't know what happened to them. So luckily I have this. So I'm gonna cut one of these out at least. Um, I found a nice little flower, a doily that I'm probably going to distress because this is too white for my color scheme. Um, because this, I do wanna keep some of the red bits. So that's why I've got like a blushing bride and red scheme going. I'm going to use some rhinestones. I found a little bit of ribbon, so I'm going to use that. I've got some red grow grain. I'm going to use that. Um, two different heart punches, whatever you have. And then I've got some paper. So I've got some cardstock and um, some designer series paper here. So let me put all this aside. To start out with, first thing I did, and I shouldn't have done this beforehand but can't go back now so I decided I want to cover for this one I want to cover the entire top layer top and bottom and like I said I want to keep this red um, but I went and used this blushing bride uh, designer series paper so what you do is you just take your lid off flip it upside down and trace it with a pencil and then you cut it out on the inside line so this should fit perfectly and it pretty much does. And if it doesn't, you can just go back and trim it. Um, and then I did the same thing with the bottom and cut it out of the blushing bride. So how do you get this stuck on here? Well, like I said, you can decoupage. Um, if you like decoupage glue, you could use, um, what's the other stuff, Mod Podge. Um, I found this stuff, this matte gel, and this is what I use when I um, alter cigar boxes. I like the feel of it and it's 
um, it's soft but it adds some texture so if you wanted to paint on it later or stamp on it um, it'll give you some grip and plus it's easy to work with and it doesn't take long to dry so I'm gonna do this right now and I use a regular paintbrush um, this one's from Ranger but any old paintbrush will do like a flat one all right let's do um, the bottom first because then I can set it to dry on itself and then take the lid off. So I've got this lined up and we're just gonna dip it in here and back and forth. This is, so this is like, it acts like glue, um, but it also is like a surface prep kind of thing. So you can put this, um, attach your papers to it um, but if you just want it, like, if you didn't have this, you could use gesso, I think would have the same effect as far as prepping the surface. All right, so we're just doing, I'm going to get this around. All right, now when you are decoupaging or putting anything on like this, there's a technique. So this is wet, and right now this is dry. So this would be dry on wet or wet on dry. There's also um, a method called wet on wet and it makes it a little bit easier to work with. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put the same stuff on here and I'm making both surfaces wet. And uh, I'm not worried too much about going over the lines because I can flip this paper over. All right, now you can see the, my cardstock is starting to curl already because of all that moisture and that's okay. All right, so now let's put this on and I should have a little bit of wiggle room since it's the wet on wet. So I'm just lining this up and I can tell already um, I may have to go back and trim it. So I'm just smoothing this out. Everything's lined up. I'm gonna press it and just rub over it so I really want it to stick down. You don't want any air bubbles. So far this looks very smooth and nice and I got all that matte gel right up to the edge so I shouldn't have any edges poking you know popping up but just so to make sure I'm just gonna squeeze it all around Nice, okay. Now I can push this to the side and then we'll do the same thing. So notice um, there's some like burrs kind of on the edge of this. I mean, these are not the most expensive chocolates. So I just wanna sand them a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to coat the whole thing and since this is shiny, it's foil, it might be a little bit more um, slick. And there are some grooves, some bumps along the edge. So I really wanna make sure I'm getting this medium all down in there. And I should just pick it up instead of trying to chase it across the paper. All right, smooth. And set that aside. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, paint the back of this one. Now, when I get this situated, then I'll have to time out because I will wanna go and wash my brush right away because, um, you know, it's glue. You don't want it to, to dry in your brush. And if I've got any painting friends watching, they're probably cringing that I'm putting glue on this. Um, but you need it. I guess I could use a foam, one of those foam brushes. Um, but I had this handy, so that's that. All right, so let's put this on. And again, I can hopefully move it around a little bit because we're doing that wet on wet. 
Yep, nice. All right, same thing. I'm gonna give it some good rubs. And I got a little bit extra around the edge that came out. I'm not getting any air bubbles, so that's good. I feel like I've got it all over my fingers. So maybe not the neatest project, but it's going to be really cool. Okay, so I'm going to time out and be right back after I wash my brushes out. Okay, so while that is drying, while our covers are still drying, they still feel a little damp, um, let's get started on the other bits and pieces. So I know I want to use this cute little gnome and I'm going to cut him out so I can stamp him right now. And I know I'm going to color him in probably with alcohol markers. So I'm using um, Catherine Pooler Midnight um, Premium Ar Archival. Blah. Um, it's just a good one for you can use it for any kind of coloring, whether you're gonna use watercolors, regular markers, or alcohol markers. I like it. It's a you know pretty universal. All right, so put that off to the side. Now the little saying, there's no one like you, I want to stamp that and punch it out. So again, I'm gonna go with the black. And I'm doing this on my Blushing Bride cardstock. Oh, that's cute already. Yikes. So cute. All right. And then I had tested the stamp before to see if it would fit in this punch and it does. So just get on in here and punch this out. And I'm probably going to punch and emboss a couple of different hearts. So I've got like I said, I've got these two heart punches and then I've got some different heart dies. So um, at this point, it's just getting all the stuff together, all your pieces and what you want to put on it, all your elements together. So let's do one of these, one of these. Actually, I might make do with just the punches for now. Alright, so we've got our hearts, that doily, I cut that doily out, we've got a little scrap of ribbon, this flower, another heart, a little charm, and I just realized my microphone was over sitting on the floor, not the floor, the table. All right, so I'm letting that sit, and I wanted to make this a little bit darker. So I'm just going to come in with some, um, like a light tan ink. This is crumb cake. And I'm just going to swirl it around. I just got these brushes, so <clears throat> I'm playing with them more. I like them. I had a set, another set from another company, like for a year and a half. And um, I was just too nervous about getting them dirty. And so I never used them. And I should have, because they're really cool. All right, and it doesn't matter that this is gonna get a little, that I'm wrinkling it a little, because I'm just gonna glue it on anyway. All right, is that, I'm just looking at it. I think I need to get over here a little bit more. Okay. Now I have found with these, um, you're just supposed to rub it on a, a microfiber cloth and that gets most of the color off. Nice. And then I just have them in a coffee mug. All right, let's check our cover. It feels good. All right, now I can see here where I didn't quite get this cut exactly perfect. So I just want to go around and trim the paper flush up to the box. 
and it is actually tricky trying to not cut the box itself. Okay. And the light is tricky on this side. All right. I think I'm getting it. And it's just a sliver hanging off, but I always worry that, you know, that would become a, a point where you would catch it with, you know, your fingers opening and closing it. And so I don't want anything hanging off. And realistically, this is something that, um, they can keep, you know, after they eat the candy and uh, they can put their little treasures in it. All right, now see how I've got the same thing going here. So this time I've got to put the lid on so I don't drop the candy. And that's just going to make it even more interesting getting in here with these scissors. Okay, looks good, looks good. Now, if you had wanted to stamp the back, put anything on the back, you probably should have done that first. Um, but with this one, I didn't want to do any of that because I was just focused on covering the back up. So if you wanted to doll it up with any kind of stamping or embellishing or um, stickers or anything like that on the paper itself, you should probably do that before you attach it to your back. All right, so let's see what I've got going on here. So I'm thinking something along the lines of my heart and my doily. Then I've got these other hearts that I may run some of these through. Maybe I'll run these through an embossing folder. Um, but I'm thinking I'm just going to staple this on. I don't know where yet. And then I do want to add a bit of ribbon. So this is just um, some pretty wide, I think it's seven eighths inch wide, red grow grain. So let's go ahead and tie that in a, a bow first. And this is the bow maker I use. Um, I know you can do it with your fingers too, but I'm not that great at it. So over, oh good, perfect size. And then I pull it tight. Nice, okay. And then I wanna tug these down. And actually, I'm just gonna chop this off down here for now. And I don't mind that these are like different shades um, because it doesn't always have to be matchy-matchy. Oh yeah, I'm liking this. I may put it right like that. So actually I'm gonna go ahead and staple this. This is just some pleated satin ribbon. Um, and I'm gonna cover, that staple's gonna get covered up. So I do that a lot when I wanna keep something held in place. And then trim these bits off. All right, so what I have to do now is color my gnome guy and I'm gonna do I'm gonna emboss some of these hearts. And that's just using some different embossing folders. Um, I'm gonna go out and see what I have and then I'll come back, okay? All right, so I'm back. Um, so I left, I've got my bow tied. I colored in my gnome and cut them out. Um, I stamped them on like a thick vanilla and then I colored them with two different shades of red and pink. So this is Poppy Parade, light and dark. His nose and hands are petal pink. Um, his body is flirty flamingo and the heart is real red. And I think gray granite. Um, but first I wanna add glitter. I want his beard to be all glittery. So I'm just gonna take my glue pen and color in all of his beard. And I'm trying not to get it like on his hands or 
anything else. So we'll see. All right, and then I'm just gonna scoop this through my glitter. Oof, that is cute. Cute, 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 I love it. So cute. Okay, so now I'm ready to finish dolling this up. So this is kind of where I'm leaning towards for placement. I wanna have him here. I wanna have this maybe here. I want this bow in this corner. Actually, I gotta put that like right there because I wanna put this ribbon right on top of that. Hmm, undecided on that. I could have this peeking out here and have it dimensional. Nope, I think I'm gonna go over here. All right, these two, I'm definitely putting them here. So I'm just gonna add some um, glue. This is my favorite glue as far as generic, you know, all purpose. All right, so let's put them there. And you can have things dimensional too. Like if you wanna pop some things up, this can be really 3D. Um, and then I kinda want that. Let me lay these down again. There's no one like you. I kind of want that right next to a little gnomey guy. And I'm gonna put that like behind there. This seems like a lot of hearts, um, but that is, that's okay. I think a group of three, and then there's no one like you, or I maybe put it like this at an angle because I want this flower in here too. Uh, okay, I'm digging it. I think this is what I'm going with. All right, he is gonna get popped up. So we're just gonna use a bunch of dimensionals. And I'm gonna glue this flower down. So see in the end, there's only a little bit of this doily peeking out, and that's okay. All right, I'm gonna put some glue here, tuck him back in. And you may notice I use like three different um, embossing folders, just because I want them to all be a little different. All right, I'm gonna glue that one down. I think I'm gonna pop this one up. Yeah. And I've got some of these rhinestone things to put on here. Really doll it up. Okay, let's go. We'll have him here and I want this one at a little angle. And that punch is a little hairy on that edge. Oh yeah, cute, cute, cute. All right, so I've got to attach this and I think I'm going to use glue dots for that because they hold pretty strong um, and it's not as messy as liquid glue. All right, so we'll put that, I want that right there. And let's trim these tails. Oh, and I cut it the wrong way. So that's gonna have to be a little bit shorter. Nope, I'm gonna have to remake this bow, all right. Quick, quick, quick. It's not the end of the world. All right, so let's make another one. So I go around both of these, under, over, wrap it around, and this is, I tug it tight, and then I tie this in a knot like that, and then really wiggle it around. Okay. 
let's hope I don't mess this one up but you know what I am gonna just trim it like that just at an angle I really do like the dovetail on these ones though but it's done over it okay and I want more glue dots on this as well and I'm gonna use like two or three and I'm just gonna put that right on top of there oh see I love that how that's the pleated is poking through oh, nice all right and I still have this heart gem and some of these bigger rhinestones and this guy hmm he doesn't have to be on here I may save that for something else let me just put that away but we'll attach my little gnome and I am putting some of those rhinestones on because I don't want the glitter to be the only bling um, but you can see like this really comes together kind of quickly all right let's do one of these big ones so I want oh yeah one there and I'm gonna do another big one and then the smaller size one there and I don't want it like right next to it um, there 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 I feel like I need some smaller rhinestones yeah smaller coming right up like a smaller well that's like a line so okay right there yep and then I will do another one hmm maybe right there okay I am happy with that so we've got our sparkly gnome we've got some rhinestones our flower like you know whatever you find that you want to use together and then let's just look at the back again still nice so that's our first one uh, next let me reach over now I'm gonna do a bigger one and I'm not gonna have the same theme so this one is gonna be completely different so I'm gonna gather my supplies and I'll be right back all right so I have decided for the next two um, my medium one and my large one I want to paint them because I don't want any of the red showing um, I am gonna cover the front and back with cardstock or designer paper um, but I want to paint this side piece and this around the edge um, and then I want to I want to paint it black um, but in order to get a good grip first this time I'm going to use gesso and I'm going to paint that on first and let it dry and then I will come back in and paint with the black and I'm just using this acrylic paint that I got from um, a local stamp store this I used to have a bunch more paints um, and this is the first time using this so we'll see how it goes but pretty much paint is paint so I'm gonna fast forward through this and um, and then I'm gonna set these off to dry so like I said I'm gonna paint the sides with gesso and this bottom part because I don't want any red showing up this on the edge and then I will I'll paint both of these and let them dry and then we'll come back okay and again I'm using just a paintbrush I'm using the same paintbrush that I used for my um, the first one that I painted whoa when I use the uh, matte medium okay so this is more painty and I want to keep the chocolate nice
Welcome back. I finally have all of this is dried. Um, so you can see I painted around the top and around this edge. And then on the bottom, I painted just around the edge. Um, it's not perfect, but that's okay. Um, you don't necessarily want to paint or do anything to this side because you don't want to interfere with opening and closing. Like it's a little loose, but don't risk it. Um, now this took several hours actually. I mean, I'm glad I decided to paint both of them. You can see there, got everything. It was good to do them both at the same time, um, but it just took longer than I expected. And I just realized this one looks like this has split like at the bottom. Like I said, these were, I mean, it's Russell Stover's, but I got them at Walmart. I'm going to end up, um, I'm going to put some tape or something around that when I get to that one. So, yep, took some time, um, but that's okay. Everything's nice and dry now. And that gave me some time to think about, um, what do I want to do for these and which elements do I want to use? So I went through and pulled some different ribbons uh, for this one. I've got some night and navy corduroy and some green um, grow grain. Those are from my stash. Um, then I did some die cutting and embossing. So this one I want to have like a golf theme because I had some of these um, golf papers. And my idea was, oh, sorry, I gotta get situated. I wanted to basically divide this into quarters and have different panels on here. So I'm gonna glue those all on and then just trim around it. Um, so let's get a ruler out and I'm just gonna have to do this with a Sharpie and that'll be okay. So let's do this as straight as I can get it. And I can tell that's beating up. That doesn't want to. That doesn't want to dry. But we'll see. We'll give it a minute. All right. And now um, I can't tell where the middle is. It's hard. So let me hold this up, and we'll get close enough. So I hold. I put this on my um, scoring board to measure it and it was like seven by seven and a half. So that's how I came up with my rectangles. So seven, that meant each one this way had to be three and a half. And then this way had to be three and three quarters. So that's what I cut those four pieces at. And luckily um, I didn't have a whole lot of that paper left anyway. I've been rationing it. Um, so it's all good. All right. And I will try to get this straight, straight ish. And actually I want to measure this again. All right. That looks three and a half and I got to come on this side. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. That does not look even to me, does it? Nope. The part is, it, it throws me off being here. Like from here to here, six and three quarters. Yeah, eh. But when I go this way, seven and a half, so that would be three and three quarters, which would actually put it like here, which is even more odd. All right, let me just hold one of these up. Hmm. Okay. That's going to fit. So this is kind of my idea, my plan. Now, either way, because of the way um, the plaids are in this, either way, I'm going to have green next to green. It's either going to be there or here. I think I'm going to go with it this way because I wanted to, I use this embossed heart. <clears throat> so, all right let that dry for a minute. Now what I can do is the bottom of this one, I want to be the same shade of green. So here's where 
Uh, let me put this here. All you're going to do is trace around it with a pencil and then cut it out. Now I could have just, while I was painting it, I could have just painted the bottom too. Um, but I wanted it to be a different color. I didn't want the bottom to be black too. All right, I'm going to set this off right here. And I may speed through this, but I just wanted you to see. So when you say, when I say cut on the inside of the line, so this is the edge of our box. Whoa. So I want to cut on this side of it. <clears throat> And let's flip this over. So my grid, that's staying put. I just need that as a guide anyway. All right, now see how messy this is? It does not even matter. Oh wait, I wanna flip it that way. Okay, this looks like it's gonna be a good fit. And I can feel it's hanging over just a little bit. But that's okay. All right, I am back. I have my brush, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna use my matte gel again um, to attach the cardstock to the bottom of the box. And I just realized between leaving you and coming back with my brush that I should really do my bigger box at the same time because you know, if I'm gonna have the, the matte gel out and my paintbrush, I might as well just do them both. So I'm gonna flip this over, put that to the side bring in this larger one actually let me just shove this stuff over here a little bit um, now this large one is too big for eight and a half by 11 paper because um all right it's 11 would work but the width is like nine and a half so i have to use 12 by 12 on this one and luckily i have some that matches so this is going to have a knight and navy bottom um, and this is a different theme anyway, so that doesn't matter. Just know that the blue matches. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna trace around the box, the bottom. And then I'm gonna cut it out. And I'm actually gonna trace the um, designer paper that I'm gonna use for the front also. All right, so here, that is very big, but now I'm going to put, <clears throat> I want this piece pattern on the top and it's, I like it that it's not really directional. So it doesn't matter which way I lay my, um, my heart down on. So I'm going to take this off and just put it in the corner again, like I've been doing. And I hope I will be able to see this pencil mark. But if not, I could go back with a Sharpie because <clears throat> that would show up. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now because it won't matter um, using a Sharpie to butt it up against the, the edge of this heart because that's black anyway. All right, I've got all my hearts cut out. These are the two, oh wait, it's gonna go that way. These are for the larger box. And I'm gonna set that down here. Let's bring in the medium one. And get my gel mat going. Paintbrush, just, you know, flat paintbrush. I'm gonna flip this over. 
So it's going to fit on there like that. And same thing as I did with the first one. I'm going to cover the back with the gel medium. And then I'm going to add, we're going to do wet on wet. So then I'm going to put the gel medium on the paper too. And then put them together. And I think that's just a better bond, um, but you don't have to do it that way. Like I said, you can use Mod Podge for this. Um, think of anything that you would do to decorate a cigar box. Mod Podge, this medium, um, you could use regular glue. You could use, you know, your multi-purpose glue. I mean, it does have a brush end on the bottom, although I've never used that. All right, let me push this over here. And this is the glue side because I had my little pencil mark. on now I'm not worried about um, that I've gotten it like over up top here because that should dry nicely I shouldn't see it all right let's get these smashed together it's a matte gel so it, it'll have a matte finish and I can tell I didn't quite get to the edge so I'm gonna have to um, use my sharpie and get on those edges but that's fine okay so that's the bottom of that one <clears throat> and now I actually may have to do just dry on wet for this oops particular for these quarter sheets um, because that'll just be a bunch of trouble trying to keep hold of them but I am going to put them in the order so I want that one there I'm gonna go that one there, here, and there. So let's get our medium on. And I am gonna have to trim around this, the edge of this one. Now I am kind of worried a little bit because this flower, um, that may make, it may make not lay flat. Put that there, uh, but we'll see. All right, let's try to line this up. And I'm just trying to press as close as I can up to the edge because I don't want any of these seams popping up. I mean, it is just a box of candy, but I figure, you know, people may want to keep it treasure it forever because I made it for them. No, I'm kidding. No, but they might want to put stuff in it. Give that a good burnish. Now 
And I'm just going to go around with my finger. Like around the edge. Okay. Now that, we're going to set that off to the side. And then I'm going to bring in the big one. Which I had right here. Oh, here we go. It's not like my area is that big to lose something. Okay, so this is going to be our top. Set that off. And bottom. And that looks good. Okay. Now this is really... Um, a big area but that's okay all right so I may speed through this because it's just doing the same thing putting the gel medium down and then I will put it on the the blue that I'm adding the blue cardstock and then I will place place it on top of here Okay, we are back, ready to do our medium box. This all looks good. Um, now I can see some of the green poking out on the bottom, um, but I am not too concerned about that. So let me just pull the lid off. Um, so all I'm gonna do is trim right around the edge here. And if I happen to take up some of the cardboard, it's not the end of the world. Almost there. A little bit there. Okay, let me get this in the trash. And then I'm going to go around and look. Um, since I did cut, cut some of the side of the cardboard off, 
I need my Sharpie to the rescue. And it's a chisel tip. Um, I'm just going to run it. I'm just going to do the whole thing at this point. And then I can see right there, I got an edge poking up. So I'm going to go back and hit that with some glue. Just because it's right where those two pieces are meeting. You know, otherwise I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Okay. And at this point, I'm just going to use some of my, this liquid glue. Pry it up just a little bit. And that's actually probably too much. So I'm going to rip off a piece, scrap of paper. Do some surgery here. I'm just going to hold that for a minute. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I'll get out my goodies. So I've got another heart. I layer that. I've got a golf cart. Uh, because if you can tell, this friend likes golf. And I've got three hearts. Now these colors all come from this paper. So it's night and navy, real red, um, crushed curry, and garden green. And then I've got Love You, and then I've got this little stamp set from Ink Road. I'm gonna do Happy Galentine, Galentine's Day. It's gonna be adorable. Oh, did you see that? That glue stuck to my finger and ripped my paper. Now I'm gonna have to think of something I have to kind of hide that. That is so disappointing when that happens. I mean, I know in the end, no one's going to see it. Um, especially if I cover it up. But that's just irritating to get down almost to the finish line. All right, I think that's good. I better not touch that anymore. Jeez. All right, so let's look at again. Let me put this put this back together. So I'll set that on there. Put our lid on. I kind of want to incorporate. I wanted to incorporate these ribbons, but I just don't know how. I didn't have that part made up yet. That part wasn't in my mind. I could do another staple, just make a little tassel kind of thing. Uh, but I would want those corduroys to both be facing the right direction. Oh, I see. Okay. So here I'm going to fold it like that. And then I'll put a staple right there. Let me get some of these in here too. And I don't know how long I want these, so I'm just going to go really long for now. And then I can trim them. All right. So I've got both there. Can you see I've kind of got it folded up like a collar kind of nice okay actually I am happy with that so see the staple at barely comes through both um, pieces but that's all we need I may trim that more later all right so here's what I'm thinking green heart there on that side because I've got all the green over here. Golf cart's going to go here. Hearts are going to be here. I don't really want to cover up all of these um, golf balls and the sticks, whatever those things are. I forget. Um, so maybe I'm going to go here, here, and Lovey's going to be right here. Mm, I kind of need this to go I'm gonna have to move some stuff around. Okay. And this part is just the tricky 
getting it the way I want it to look. Oh, I could do that. Have that covering that. See, this part I didn't quite have all figured out yet, um, but I am liking this. Because if I put it over here, that's really gonna cover up most of that big heart. All right, let's go with some glue dots again. And you may want to like hot glue this. But the glue dots seem to work just fine. All right, and that is still bothering me. Of course it is. All right, but I'm gonna put that one right there and I'm gonna use dimensionals for that. Um, and then I'm gonna go with black ones since it's kind of dark. Now, since it's gonna go like down the sides, I really only want dimensionals here and here because there's no point in making them stick to the ribbon because a the ribbons moving b um they don't want to stick good to that ribbon the corduroy especially oops all right so we'll put that there and then these can still fly freely and I am digging how that's that long. All right, I'm just gonna glue this on because I am committed to this heart being in this quadrant. Okay. I have to figure out how I can cover that up. You know what I could have well, the go-kart going this way or the golf cart whatever I kind of feel like if I have it this direction it's kind of gonna run off the the box you know what I could put it here because then I can put a gem there and I can have dimensionals on both sides of the ribbon okay I think that's that's how that's going to come together. So let me double check. Okay. Looks like I could have them here and right there. So right up top. And since it's black dimensionals on black paper, if the edges are peeking out, it's not gonna be a tragedy. You're not really gonna notice. Now, if you don't have black dimensionals, um, I've seen people use foam tape um, and then they just take a Sharpie and color around the edges or regular dimensionals if you just have the white ones. And really, I like that idea too with the Sharpie because um, I think we as crafters have a lot of Sharpies anyway and you could find one in your stash that matches your color scheme. Okay. Ooh, I like that. I got to look at this for a minute. Okay. Straight enough. Okay. So love. I have that there. Nope. I need the yellow heart here red heart here and I'm just gluing these in all right I'm gonna hold that down for a minute that's gonna go there crooked that's totally fine now for love I want to go in with my um, fine tip glue I just had a stamp that fell off my little holder 
um, just because this is so skinny. I should have probably used like um, adhesive sheets or something, but that didn't happen. All right, so now this will dry clear too. So if I don't get it uh, quite exactly perfect, it'll be fine. There we go. Try this. I'm just gonna hold it there for a minute. And I'm finished with this. So the thing with this fine tip glue, you really gotta put this pin back in the where the glue comes out. Otherwise it, it wants to uh, it will harden up. I feel like I didn't get enough glue down there. Let me just hold it another minute. Because I certainly don't want this to fall apart or to come apart, you know? All right, let's get this down in here. Man, I kind of got to force that. Okay. Fine tip glue. So I want to say love you. And I'm going to put that at an angle to match the love. Okay. Hold that for a minute. And then <clears throat> I got a little scrap of white and I'm just gonna hand cut this. Um, so I'm gonna stamp my Happy Galentine's Day. I got this a couple years ago from um, Ink Roads and I really like her stuff. It's Some of it's like really just funny. All right, I'm going to do this in Night of Navy. Which I can tell I need to re-ink, uh, but that's okay. some more I think I want to put this like right here and then I'm going to use uh, some mini this time in white mini dimensionals whatever kind of pop-up things you have if you had a strip of it like I've gotten a roll of this stuff from Amazon before that I really do like using that gets you a lot of coverage quick and you don't have to sit here and pick all these little bits off it's just like one stripe okay so if this is straight I kind of want it still still doing the angle thing so happy Galentine's Day love you now I was looking for something um, some kind of embellishment or doodad that reminded me of golf balls um, and I didn't really have anything I've got these clear faceted things um, but the bumps are like the wrong way you know golf ball they're supposed to go in so I'm just gonna use these uh, gold gilded gems because I like them anyway and I can actually put one right there on the edge and that's gonna make me happy to kind of cover up that boo-boo even though I don't like it being 
so close to the edge that's gonna that's gonna work all right so we'll do we had a large one over there and let's do one mm, let's do one here and then a smaller one up here now that is a big triangle so normally I want like groups of three mm, but I would want like two and one maybe I'll put this one here okay I like that better two and one because if I had it up here that's just like isosceles that's not really what I'm going for but I love it all right so this is our medium one finished I love it okay let me get this all cleaned up and drag my other one in and we'll finish up that last one all right now we are ready for this last one the largest one um, so I've got a couple of ribbons that I found that are gonna go nice enough nicely with that um, now I've got this large vellum heart so I cut this out by using this piece as a template um, now I only did this because this is gonna be for my husband I wouldn't pick this out and touch all over it if it was gonna give it to somebody else um, but you see how it fits there I didn't want to cover up all this paper that's why I went with vellum because I want just a little something there to break it up um, but not a ton so that's there I've got this larger heart that I embossed and basically this one's just going to be a lot of different hearts um, with some ribbon I want to tie a big bow I think I'm gonna have that at the top we'll see and then I embossed a bunch of these with some sea life um, now my husband isn't crazy about like sea life or the aquarium or anything but I picked these colors uh, because I made his Valentine a couple weeks ago and I kind of want it to have the same theme um, and I only did this because he likes blue so blue Valentine is gonna get this um, I'm gonna use some of these blue gems I think these ones are gonna look pretty cool all right so let's let me first tie the ribbon because I want to get that one pretty big and I want to make it a double with both of these so let me see let's try that all right and I want to run them both at the same time now when my ribbons get down to the ends I just chop off the the rolls so because normally this roll would be like this big and there's no point in storing all that all right so let's eyeball this and I am at least going to want to start with them kind of in line. I don't know that that's going to work out. That might be too much trouble. We'll see. All right, now for a double. So this is going to be my tail. So I got to wrap it around twice. And this is where I'm gonna start to lose control all right I think that's twice because I have I have a loop here and here and here and here so I think that's good let's just cut those and then I will do my regular how I use this bow maker so and I, it feels like I do this a different way every time, but you kind of, you tie it and then go over and then pull this. This is really bulky. And then flip these through and pull it tight, 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 tight as you can. All right, and now, oh, I like that, but I really want to like, fluff these out some okay I'm happy with that now this time I really do want to dovetail the end so let me pay attention so I think it goes this way up towards the middle yep 
Okay, so you fold it in half and cut from this side up there. All right. Oh, I'm very happy with that. All right, and these I'm just gonna angle like that. Get this in the garbage. Pull these out some. All right, now let's bring this back in. So you see how this vellum is curling? Um, I think that is because it is picking up the moisture from here, because this, I can tell, isn't totally dry. But that's okay. Um, so the thing with attaching vellum, I have never, ever, ever found an adhesive, and I've tried them all. I've gone, you know, I, I go to the Scrapbook Expo every year. I go to s local stamp stores, scrapbook stores. Everything has a product that says doesn't show through vellum. I haven't met one that was not a lie. So I don't bother trying to find something invisible anymore. I gave up on that years ago. What I do is try to hide my adhesive. So I'm going to I'm gonna have this here. So I can use a pretty liberal amount of glue. Let's see, do I want this here? Here, nope, here. Decisions, decisions. I don't want to have everything off to the side, but I really am liking that better. All right, so I can put glue here and I can put it all here and here. And I will use my favorite liquid glue. So there, there, and right there. And I'm gonna hold this for a minute. It seems like it takes longer for this glue to dry enough that you can, you know, not hold it down on vellum. It takes longer on vellum. And I'm sure that's because it's not as porous as cardstock. Um, but we'll just sit here for a minute. Now, when I go to put these other hearts on, um, I may notice that things are sticking up on the edges and that's where I will figure out where do I want to put my gems and I will slide a glue dot under the vellum and then I'll be putting that right on top. So that hides it as well. All right. Looking good. I'll just put this. And I can run this off the edge. That's okay. So this one I didn't emboss. I just stamped. I had a, um, it was from Technique Junkies, I think. It was a background stamp, some distressed lines. more glue All right, I'm going to hold this for a minute I'm going to attach my ribbon next and then I'm going to add these hearts that I've embossed so I'm using Misty Moonlight and Night of Navy I could have gone with some Pacific Point that was the other color in here but I feel like the ribbon kind of pulls that shade of blue in so we'll get it there and then I, I didn't know what to stamp or cut out. I was, you know, I didn't really want to mess with it. Um, so I decided I'm going to spell out Happy Valentine's Day on this label maker. And I've got the blue tape, um, all sorts of colors, but that comes in handy. All right, I think that's good. So let's get some more glue dots for this. And this will be, I'm going to use a lot of glue dots. This very wide organdy, I love it. Um, I've had this for a long time, like a whole pile of it. All right, let's just stick that there. Yeah, I'm liking that blue. Let me just pull these apart some more. Since they started going on the other side, pulling apart anyway. 
I like that. All right, so we're going to glue. And I should pop some up, so let's get some dimensionals. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So I do like an odd number, but I feel like that's a little too many. So let's do one. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to pop this one up as well. I tell you, these chocolates actually smell good. I'm surprised I haven't eaten any after working with these all day. And this really has been an all day project. But for making three, I get it. And with the painting and, you know, I had to do the gesso first and wait for that to dry. And if you were doing one, it would be not an all day thing. I'm guessing. All right, put that there. Okay, so now to spell out Happy Valentine's Day, love you, and then um, place my sequence. So I'm going to speed this up while I do all this. So I gave it extra spacing in between the words because I didn't know if I would want to cut them out. Um, so happy Valentine's Day. I'm definitely splitting this at I love you. Put that there. have it here and here. I'm going to go with that. All right. So let's try to peel this up. Now, sometimes with this um, label maker tape, I put some liquid adhesive under it too, liquid glue, because I don't trust the adhesive. Um, I don't know how old this is. I bought this off one of the uh, de-stash places, sites, websites, or Facebook groups. Hmm, I need like a little poker to get in here. I mean, I love this label maker because it's kind of like nostalgia. There we go. All right, that just took a minute longer than I wanted. Okay, so, like I said, I do want to use some liquid adhesive too. I don't think that hurts anything. I 
and it doesn't have to go over the whole thing. I'm gonna hold it down, and of course I got some on my finger. It's par for course. Yeah, hold this. And then I love you. That one was easy because that was at the end where you cut it off. Hold that. And now I can get in there with some glue dots under some sequins. Okay, so scissors finished. Pokey thing away. Just trying to clean up a little bit and let that dry up for a minute. Okay, so I can tell I'm going to want a sequin there. And it's probably going to be a big one. Man, I feel like I got glue everywhere. All right, so glue dots. So I like two. You can just pick your glue dot right off of here. All right, and it's gonna go right there. So see how you can see it through there? <coughs> That's perfectly fine, because we're gonna cover it up. All right, and then I'm gonna want I think I'm going to use five rhinestones to kind of go with the five hearts. So we'll do two big ones, so it'll be same, same, and then three smaller ones. So I'm going to have a bigger one over here, and that's not going to get, that's not going to cover anything up. And then I will do a small one there. Maybe a small one here, so that's when I will add another glue dot. So that's going to go right there. Okay. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I think that's all I need as far as glue dots because everything else is going to, nothing's really popping up. All right. I swear to put this final one. This is always the tricky bit. I kind of want it close to this one. All right, I love it. So this one, I mean, it's for my husband, so all he needs is my love and all these hearts. Um, but I really love it. I love the ribbon, um, everything. Happy Valentine's Day, I love you. So let me flip this over and we will take a final look at all three of them. And then I'll post pictures. Um, hopefully this is all in the screen. Um, but if not, I'm definitely gonna post pictures. This one, I'm still, I can't even stand it. It's so cute. Okay, and I can't tell, mm, I don't think that's getting them all. So, all right, let's do a run through one more time. So here we've got our small one, oops. There's no one like you. And again, I stuck with the, um, I left the sides red, I didn't do anything. I used the red in the color scheme. So I've got red and like the blushing bride. Then we've got our golf theme one. Happy Valentine's Day. Painted the sides. Bottom is the uh, the garden green and um, golf carty. Happy Valentine's Day. I like that one. And then the largest one, which is the the blues and kind of the sea theme. Um, well, it matches the card. Let's say that. So uh, that really did take me. Um, about nine hours so unfortunate I wish it hadn't taken that long um, but I love it I got these a couple weeks ago I wanted to make these last year for 
um, a class or just to, to make them and show them, you know, make a do something. But I wasn't doing videos then and I ran out of time. So we ate that candy and then I got new ones this year. And um, I'm glad I finally got the time. Thank God for snow days, right? We had snow and ice here in Maryland today. Um, so I'm glad I was able to share this with you. And I hope you are inspired to make your own. I mean, these candies are not that expensive. So, and you can keep the box forever if you want. I think it's lovely. Okay, thanks for joining me and um, I will catch you later. Thanks, bye.